Have you ever written, drawn or painted something and just been too embarrassed to show anyone? I know what that feels like. I honestly do know what that feels like. I've written that story and shown it to someone and then just cringed afterwards thinking how did I ever do that? Hi I'm Jules and I make videos on drawing and publishing every week. So if that's your thing make sure you subscribe and ding the bell notification so you get all of my uploads. The dinging is really important otherwise you just won't know when things are uploaded. So how can you get over this excruciating embarrassment to show your work? First let's examine why you're embarrassed. Let's say you've written a novel or you've made a piece of artwork and it's not something that you would normally do. Maybe it's your first time and you're a newbie to the art. The biggest reason that we lose confidence is called imposter syndrome. I have the cure for that coming up later in the video so make sure you stick around and watch that bit. Imposter syndrome is when you are doing something that you feel utterly unprepared for. Perhaps it's something that you've not trained for but you really want to give it a go. You might think that other people, the ones that know what they're doing, might laugh at you or make you feel bad about what you've done. Well, they might if they're nasty, but we're going to discount the nasty people. Everybody has to start somewhere. Literally everybody. Your favourite author wasn't born a genius. Case in point, one of my favourite authors that I've been reading a lot recently, and I won't give any names away for fear of retribution, I read her first two novels fairly recently. Well, I started to read them. I, I used my 50 page rule on both of them because they were terrible. And it was absolutely gutting and surprising in equal measure. I couldn't believe it because her later work is absolutely brilliant. See, everybody has to start somewhere. You might be fearful of failure or humiliation. But whose standards are you actually worried about? If you have done the best that you can at the moment, you literally cannot do any better than that. You might well look back in years to come and think, oh dear, that was where I started. It wasn't as good as I am now. But that's, that's how it's supposed to be. It's a journey. You start off not very good, you learn about things and you get better. If it was the other way around, I'd be quite worried. We all have likes and dislikes. Imagine what it was like for Picasso when he first started painting people's faces on just the one side. I bet he got a massive amount of stick for that, but now his paintings sell for millions. And more recently, for me, um, I've made it no secret that I really like Oliver Jeffers' work. He's one of my favourite children's illustrators and he put up a post on Instagram and got completely slated by somebody. She said he had a lot of followers for such an average artist. I was like this. What? I mean, actually, what? Average? Are we actually looking at the same thing? But because the marks that he makes on the paper speak to me, it doesn't mean to say that it's necessarily going to speak to the next person. By the way, she got quite a lot of stick about that comment. If someone who is internationally recognised as re really being a great artist and somebody who makes a really good living at doing just that and is very popular, if he can get stick, then so can we all. It all just goes to show it's just a load of nonsense. So why not give it a go? Why can't you create your thing, whatever it is? It's just other people's opinions. At least you have done something. Maybe they haven't. I really like the idea that what other people think of you is none of your business. We could drive ourselves mad trying to make everybody love us and our work, but it's never going to happen. Why? Well, because we're all free-thinking, free-speaking human beings and what they think is none of your business. Your business is what you think of yourself and trying to live your most useful life. And if that usefulness includes being creative, then you owe it to yourself to do it. Your embarrassment can also be um, a sort of sign of an internal struggle with anxiety. 
I mean, if you didn't give a monkey's what anybody else thought of your work, then you wouldn't get embarrassed because it just wouldn't affect you. You'd literally just shrug it off. Oh well. And if you think you're suffering from anxiety, particularly at the moment with everything that is going on in the world, then you owe it to yourself to find something that helps. I can recommend yoga, belly breathing, meditation, all the things that you've heard 10 zillion times before. But if that doesn't work for you, then make sure you find something that does. If you can get a grip on your anxiety, then you can also boost your confidence and make yourself feel better about whatever it is that you're doing. The advent of the internet means that you can get your work out to so many more people than you could have done 10 or 20 years ago. Back in the old days, you'd have had to have passed your written work past an editor or your artwork through an agent or an art editor, but not these days. You can just post it up on the internet and it's out there for everybody to see. Aren't we lucky that we can actually do that? But what can you do about this feeling of embarrassment? Here are a few of my ideas and watch to the end because the last one is a corker. Stop apologising. If you feel like there's an apology coming up out of your chest, through your throat and welling up in your mouth, then just pinch your lips. Wait until it's gone. There is no need for you to apologise about your work. You do you. In other words, use your uniqueness. Use your USP, your unique selling point. Feel your passion working through you. Look out for inspiration and when it strikes, get to work. You'll feel a lot less embarrassed if you really feel that inspiration working up through you. If you want to, feel like you are a little bit more anonymous, then use a nom de plume or a pseudonym. A name that you've made up. That way, no one else will know it's actually you that's done the thing. I started off with a nom de plume for my adult novels. I've never published an adult novel, so I'm really glad that I didn't mix my children's and my adult stuff together. So that's safely put in another place. Remember that space can be a great place to heal. You might be painting because you're really suffering inside and your art will have an extra dimension. In this case, it doesn't matter if people like your work or they don't like your work in the same way as it doesn't matter if they like or they don't like the medication you're taking. Choose someone you really trust to show your work to. Ask them to give you positive feedback and to only criticise your work if it's something that you can genuinely change. For example, if you've written a story, then they could proofread it and they could look out for plot holes and things like that. Reading your book and saying they don't like any of the characters or they don't like it at all is not very helpful. <laughs> if you're suffering from imposter syndrome, there is a good cure for that and it is called fake it. Tell yourself that you're an entrepreneur, that you're good enough. Tell yourself you're an artist or a writer or an illustrator or a poet, even if it's the first project, the first time you've ever done this. Swap your phrases. Instead of saying, oh, I really want to be an artist, tell yourself, I am an artist. When people ask you what you want to do, tell them, well, I'm a poet, so I write poems. Now, this is a non-swear channel, so I'm going to use the word flump instead of a rude word. You have to develop the flump you method. That is, if you feel like you're being judged on your work, if someone's going to laugh at you, if you're worried that it's going to be a really humiliating experience, then what you have to do is mentally point your finger at them and say, flump you! Who cares what you think? Do they have divine right to say what is worthy and what is not? No! Flub you! With any luck, this will help you get over your embarrassment. Your work is worthy, despite the fact that not everyone will like it. But hold your head up high and feel that confidence, even if you're faking it, and it will rub off onto your work and the people who are your audience. Every creative piece has a story, so why not share it? Why not? Remember, flump you. Not, not you. That's what you have to do. 
If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Next week I'm going to be drawing a dragon, so if myths and legends are your kind of thing then make sure you join me. Subscribe and ding the bell so that you know when the video comes out and give me a thumbs up, a double thumbs up if you like, if you liked the video. I'm off to try a triceratops, so I'll see you next time. Nanu nanu! Gosh there's a lot of going on today.